Hello everybody, Dark Skeleton here, and in this video I wanted to talk about this arena run I have going on and more or less explain how to draft a good mage arena deck in the Angoro expansion. So as you can see, I'm currently 11-0, which hopefully is going to go 12-0, that would be pretty sweet actually. Uh, with this pretty sick arena deck, and I want to cover the best cards in the deck that are really making this work out well. So first off, to talk initially about it, this is definitely more of a control deck, drafting lots of high-end cards, uh, quite a few taunts in here, it wasn't really intended to be that way, uh, but it just ended up that a lot of the best cards available in the selection were taunts, like uh, Bog Creeper and Sunwalker. Uh, but let's talk about some of those key cards from the beginning and lead towards the end. So first up, Archaeologist, this was a mage card. Uh, a mage common added in the Ungoro expansion set. It's absolutely insane. It draws a secret from your deck. So if you happen to have already drafted any secrets uh, in your arena draft, then this becomes an amazing pick. I would even argue that if you haven't grabbed a secret yet and you still have 10 or 20 cards left to go, it's a good idea to just grab Archaeologist because even at its worst, it's a two-mana, two-three. So filtering your deck, being able to draw your secret, it's very solid there. Um, then we scroll down a bit to Stonehill Defender, which at first glance looks like it would be a crappy card, and I didn't even think it would be good and constructed uh, when I was initially reviewing the Angoro cards, but it turns out Stonehill Defender is actually very, very good because of its flexibility, and also it's even better in classes like Paladin because uh, you can discover the class legendaries like... Um, Tyrion Forgering, for instance. So Stonehill Defender, it's super flexible. On turn three, it's not bad because it blocks some of those one or two, uh, turn one, turn two plays. Even a one four taunt is able to kind of contest the board decently. Um, and then discovering a taunt minion means you can get a turn four play or you can get a very late game play, like another Sunwalker or uh, that new nine mana 610 taunt, the Mammoth or whatever. Uh, so this is actually a card that I would consider one of the better ones in the deck. Very solid. I mean, Mage doesn't even have a class taunt, and it's already been serving me very well in this arena draft. So sick card, and definitely if you were playing Paladin, you would absolutely draft that. Um, but yeah, let's go down a bit. So we have some kind of mediocre uh, four drops. Uh, Seam Surgery, the best of them. Um, Seam Surgery being a little better in this deck, because there's actually quite a few elementals, like Frozen uh, Crusher and Arcane Anomaly. Uh, Steam Search is actually pretty good, uh, but you have to have the elementals there for it to be good, otherwise it's just kind of decent as a 4 mana 5 4. I would probably grab Storm, uh, Steam Surger above other cards uh, in a lot of cases, just because you can high roll it and actually get the elemental synergy going on. Um, so it's not a bad card to draft. Uh, and then we looked at the 5 and 6 drops, Frozen Crusher. Uh, definitely the MVP here. Uh, you would look at it and think that what well, freezes itself, it can only attack once every two turns, so that's not as good. But actually, the stats are better than uh, not having that negative effect. Uh, I think I would draft Frozen Crusher over Boulder Fist Ogre, simply because of the stats. So this is a solid card. It also has the elemental synergy. Uh, it's been very solid in the arena draft, because in arena, it often comes down to who has the most value. And in terms of value, Frozen Crusher is amazing. And then at the end, you have the cards that Mage is so famous for, infamous for right now, Meteor. Uh, amazing card in Amina. It's almost like a six-mana flying strike in a lot of ways. Uh, 15 damage to one minion, three to adjacent ones, almost always two for, two for ones. Good for tempo if you have like some of those turn four, turn fives, and then use Meteor turn six and push seven damage. That's great. Um, and then topping things off with Firelands Portal and a Flame Strike. Uh, these three cards are kind of what make Mage Arena, and if you can get all three of them, then you're going to be golden like me. Um, so yeah, hopefully this gives you a good idea of what a solid deck list looks like in Arena. So uh, let's just go ahead and try to push for 12 wins. So I'll try to kind of commentate how I've been playing this deck, and hopefully we can get 12 0. I don't know if I've gotten 12 0 before. I think I've gotten 12 1, but I don't know about 12 0. So uh, the general idea here is that we want to play uh, rather defensively, but not to the point of just holding cards in the hand for the possibility of just getting extra value later on. Like, for instance, uh, the two mana, two, three, the uh, innkeeper, with, what, what's his name? Something innkeeper, the torn innkeeper. It heals your hero for one. Well, you would still play it on two even if you're at 30 health, because tempo does matter in Arena, uh, much more so than it did in Vanilla. Uh, it's taking a while to find that opponent, isn't it? Not many 11 O's out there. Um, so yeah, if a card is going to get you some good stats on the board, 
you probably don't want to hold it too long if that means you can just push for earlier win or earlier pressure on your opponent. Uh, so especially against a rogue like this, we're going to want to make sure he does not tempo us out of the game. Um, I would expect him to have drafted some cards like the Vine Spine Slayer, which is a 5-mana 3-4 Assassinator card as a combo. Uh, very threatening, so we'll have to be careful with our big drops. You wouldn't keep anything less than a, uh, anything for more in your opening hand. We need to get those one, two, threes. It's really important, and if we don't draw any of them, uh, we could be kind of doomed here. So Stonehill Defender, once again, that's a good pickup, great to play on turn three, uh, and it kind of gives you the flexibility of what you want to do in your future turns. The Friendly Bartender, as I was mentioning, even though it restores health to your hero, we would just play it as a 2-3 on turn 2, even if there's nothing on the board and I haven't taken any damage yet. Uh, so this hand should do fine, and I think the Stonehill Defender is kind of going to save it there. Even if we don't draw a 4-5 or five drop, we can use the Stonehill Defender here to kind of fill out our curve. And uh, that should be good. I feel like our Crawler may have some value, so I would definitely value the uh, Destroy a Pirate as a potential high roll over friendly bartenders to restore one health to the hero. So I'm going to be playing the bartender first in almost all cases, unless he plays a pirate. Um, and we'll try to hold on to this for a few turns, because obviously you both might draw a pirate. Discovering a card from your opponent's class, you might be going for some meteors, flame strikes, cards like that. Things to be aware of. If he's discovering mage cards, mage cards are really good in arena, so that's a big threat to us. Um, so yeah, we're going to take the initiative here and just play the friendly bar trender. We have a turn 3, turn 4, and probably by the turn we get to turn 5, we'll have something. Maybe 5 last in this guy or something like that. Um, but yeah, having having the uh, board initiative is pretty important, even in arena. Like, it's important in constructed, but it's also important in arena because they have to use not only the cards in their hand to deal with the board, but also bad cards in their hand. Um, so that's probably going to be a trade. I, I don't really want a dagger and that to go into Stonehill Defender because we cannot uh, Fire Blast that. So it's a little unfortunate for us, but it's a 2-drop for a 2-drop, so it's fine. Uh, here I'm going to get Sobath the Slitherer. Um, kind of a lucky high wall there. That's a really good time. Uh, good against everything except Vile Spine Slayer. So if he has one, hopefully we can bait that out first. These other two are garbage, so we're just going to go with the late game one. I would also assume that since this is a, a rogue that did not play anything on turn 1 and is at this point in the arena, he has some really good late game cards or uh, just a lot of nice synergies. So this is probably going to go along. I don't expect to finish him off on turn 7, especially with a taunt deck. It's, I mean, Stonehill Defender pushes 1 damage a turn. Okay, so he's got a 4-3 there. It's, it's like fine. Sure, it trades well against this, but um, yeah, it's like whatever. So I could either play the Polluted Hoarder, uh, Fire Blast this, uh, or the Infested Torn, but I think because the Infested Torn combines with this to kill that, uh, we're going to go that way instead of the Polluted Hoarder, because this kind of makes the board awkward. I'd have to trade a 4-2 into a 4-2. I think this works out better. And the Stonehill Defender, we can save that for a later turn uh, after we kind of regain some board tempo. So this Pirate Gun he played here was a really good answer to our board. Uh, we're just going to leave that alone. Um, kind of sit back, let him take the trade, rather than uh, letting him push through my minions. Um, but overall, it should be fine. Even if he's getting this trade, he hasn't really gone one for zero. He's like killed the first part of my Shogoth, the Slither, but he's still got to answer that later on, which is going to be tough. I mean, it's not easy to deal with a 5-9 taunt that can't be targeted. So I would expect him to play a 4-drop from his hand right now. Um, Gotta assume he's got a deck that curves out well because tempo's important, and this is the 11 0 match. Okay, so pretty average card right there. Not too worried about it. Uh, Cyclotron's a good answer here, so we're just gonna play on curve. Which is usually kind of how Arena goes. The more you can play on curve, the better you're gonna win, or the better chance you have at winning. And if you happen to hit those big cards like the Meteor, the Flame Strike, or the Firelands Portal, it's just easy peasy and you smoke everybody in the toast. Uh, I'm actually surprised you didn't have, uh, you know, better cards here. Hyrule Gun and Aberrant Berserker are, like, at best average cards. So, this might be easier than I think. We'll have to see. But we do have to be very careful about his potential to do a Vile Spine Slayer Assassinate on the hour board. Um, don't want to play Sogoth unless he's played some big removal cards like that, because that could be an easy way to throw this game. 
Um, so, as you can see, the uh, vote player is taking forever because it's really difficult to play this game, you know? Um, I mean, okay, he wants to win. I get it, I get it. So, let's just wait around. Um, okay, so, what could he be thinking about right now? Maybe, like, backstab and then uh, a combo card? A shiv, so he has a 3-drop. Okay, actually, I, I kind of expected that. Um, so, the obvious play here is to play Sunwalker, but do I want to do that? Do I think in those six cards he has a file Spine Slayer? Um, there's not really any good answers to this. Maybe I play the Polluted Hoarder in this, and then on my next turn, I stone help? Nah, that just doesn't work out for the mana curve. Um, Sunwalker is obviously the good play here, generally speaking. So he has 20 cards in his deck, I would expect about one Slayer, so 20% of the time he has a Slayer. Which would mean he would combo that with a one drop and probably wreck my card, and then what's my follow up to him having uh, 7 health on the board? Is this a better play? Um, I think here it's better to take the risk. Like, he might have that card, but if he doesn't, this is really good. And if he uses it on this, he's not using it on Sogoth, so we're taking a risk here. And generally, you do want to be careful with your big minions, but just the, the follow-up to a Polluted Hoarder, Glock, a Crawler turn isn't great, because I need to Fire Blast this down if he trades with the Crawler, and that would leave me with 5 mana, which is really awkward. Like, I don't want to spend 5 mana using Stonehill Defender, and I definitely don't want to use 5 mana doing Stonehill Defender plus a 2-drop. Okay, so he doesn't have that card in hand, but he might be going for a Polymorph. Um, that, that card he just played, the uh, Discovered Mage card, that's also a really, really good card to get in Amina. I wasn't lucky enough to draft it, but Primordial Glyph, insane mage card. Um, combined with that, Meteor, uh, the other cards, insane. Um, okay, so he doesn't have a Polymorph, that's good. He might, like, do, uh, sh yeah, Shadow Strike, I was thinking. So he's going for a little bit of tempo here, but not nearly as bad as... Okay, so this tells me he definitely doesn't have any more combo cards if he's going to use that. Um, we should be fine here. So, Polluted Hoarder, Galaka Crawler, I think that's the play. What? Uh, Boulder Fist? I think we have enough health, and he obviously didn't have any hard removal, so we can just use this and get a 2 for 1, I think. Uh, let me think about it a little bit more. Polluted Hoarder does trade well with this board. This does not. Polluted Hoarder, Stonehill Defender, and then Stonehill just dies. So yeah, I think Boulder Fist Ogre is the best play here. And hopefully he doesn't draw an Assassinate. That would be uh, pretty painful. And I do think I'm currently favored to win. If he doesn't draw any hard removal cards for cards like this, he's going to be in serious trouble. Okay, um, I can't moat look at that, that's unfortunate, but, uh, you know, it's actually not that big a deal. It's a 7 mana crappy minion, so, you could even frostbolt it. So, this is probably gonna go there. Um, or should could face? I'll have to think about this a little bit more. So, I could frostbolt this and ping, it's 4 damage, plus this, it's a 4-2 on board, and then go face, nah, um, I could frostbolt this, hit that. Take a little less damage. Um, so that would be uh, two mana, five mana. I think I like playing this onto the board because this trades pretty nicely into that. And if we can uh, draw into like those meteor flame strikes, he could get shut down quick badly. I do have to think about my life total though. Um, so yeah, we will go with this play. It works out nicely for the mana. And it incentivizes him to trade, which is good for our life total. So if I were Sam, I would probably trade into this unless I have a better answer in hand. Trading into this sets up too perfectly for me to just ping it, but he might do that too, but probably not because he has 30 health. I'm actually in the defensive this time. Um, next year might just be uh, soak off the Slitherer, block some of his damage coming in, 
Uh, if we draw like meteor or anything like that, though, that's uh, okay. You might be setting up for a deadly poison and venom weapon. It's one of the better cards in the rogue arena. So does he trade here? That's a question. Ooh, and that's also a really good answer to show Goth. Okay, so he doesn't do that. So I'm definitely going to be pinging this turn. Uh, Stonehill Defender is going to save me some life. Uh, Finally, it's portal. Uh, you know what? I think that's good enough. And I do want him to use his Poison Dagger. I, I have to get rid of that, so... Okay, yeah, there's the card I'm fearing from him having. And a Meteor, not bad. So, he's probably going to use that on this, which would be really good for me. If I can get the Shogoth down with him not having any removal, um, I'll be in a really good spot here. I just have to watch my life total, because he's definitely on the offensive here. Okay, um, that could be... A lot of things. He's probably going to get a big card, though. Hopefully not an uh, answer to Sogoth. But there's only one card that really does that, and that's uh, the... Oh, whatchamacallit. I might also just Meteor here. Uh, clear up some of the board. Make it harder for him to just trade minions in. Because he might be going for a spell that he wants to use on something big, so... Holding up some cards in his hand could buy me the time I need. So he's definitely... Is he really going to go... Wait, no, he's kidding, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so he's smart enough to play around Meteor, at least. Uh, most players, surprisingly, are not. Okay, so default is Sogoth here. But that's really risky, because I could just die. Ooh. You know what? Uh, that is good enough. Yep, okay, yeah, that's, uh, that's good. We want to play here. Let's see what happens. And we can even play a Stonehill Defender. Oof, oof, oof. And now you see why Meteor is so good. Uh, second eight Bruiser. Yep, you want to go for the value card. And that's a good enough Meteor. So he's got three cards to my four, and three of my cards are pretty big. He's also got a 1-4 Taunt on the field. You can kind of see why Stonehill Defender is so awesome, I hope. Um, I think this game is almost certainly going to go my way, unless he has some insane cards that can't be answered by a moat lurker. If I can keep that moat lurker behind taunts, I might be able to just destroy his 12-12 or whatever and keep it to myself for the rest of the game. Okay, that's a pretty big one. So, uh, do you have any big cards there? Mark of the Wild. Good enough to moat lurker, I think. Okay, yeah. Keep hitting yourself in the face. Sure. Um... Yeah, so I think here's where we moat lurker. Because I don't think he can do anything about that. So that's two cards down. Um, one card permanently gone, and uh, this guy only comes back if he manages to kill the moat lurker. So uh, if he has a meteor here, that would be good. But he doesn't, because he already spent the mage card, which was discover a mage card. What did he? Maybe he does have it. I, I doubt it, but you know, I, I haven't been paying as much attention as I really should. Even if it was like a meteor, Sogoth should be uh, pretty good there. I'm, I'm hoping that he has to like use a bio spine or something like that. Well, if he was going to do that, it would obviously go here. Okay, so easy ping, no stealth minions, easy game. I think, yeah. I mean, he's pretty much out of everything. So uh, the goal here now is just protect the. Uh, I don't even need to vote perfectly, Voli, honestly. I'll just play it kind of slow, put more taunts in his way. So, he could only kill the Moat Lurker if he has like a fan and knives here, plus something. Very unlikely. I'm sure he'd love to get it back, but there's a good chance that's not going to happen for a while. Eh, okay, so, I paddle. I don't think that's going to cut it. That's definitely a misplay. He should be using it on that guy on the right. Does he have a Betrayal? A sap. Okay, sure. Why not? Could play Shogoth, but still no need to risk it, I think. Um, okay, so we'll play that for a reduced mana cost. Ooh, well, uh, oh, wait, no. <laughs> That's not the secret. So I haven't drawn Counterspell yet, so... I think I want to grab the counterspell while I can. 
And now you see why this card's broken. Counter spell, hit that, hit this. So now, even if he had a card which could target this board somehow, it's going to get counterspelled, so he's not going to be able to hit my face, which means, uh... Well, let's see. Okay, sure. Yeah, he's going to kind of desperately go for my face. There, there's no way he's going to close out the game like that, though. First and Crusher might actually be good here. Ah, uh, you know, I, all I would need to do is draw a little more damage. Ah, uh, but you know what? I'd, uh, I'd rather have the taunt. So, let's just go like this. Um... Do I care about that? Nah. Like, you could say, well, this is a great trade because, you know, it's a 2-3 and a 2-1, but at this point, just killing him isn't bad either. Although here, I guess it's like ever so slightly punished. Um, Okay, so let's see here. If I play this, plus a ping. Uh, yeah, then I can uh, flame geyser next turn. Let's just do that. Okay, so here we're going to use that, of course. Because we have lethal anyway, I will kill it. You could argue whether it was better to kill that last turn or not. Um, I guess in a way it might have been slightly better, and he's toast, whatever. So that's a 12 win arena run with Mage, 12 out guys. Um, yeah, I hope going through this deck has been really educational for you guys. Hopefully you guys can uh, now get some good wins. Uh, most important things, obviously, Meteor, Firelands Portal, Flamestrike, that Discover card, really sick. Archaeologist, also good, but don't underestimate Stonehill Defender and Frozen Crusher as well, because they are really good cards. And let's just go ahead and see what we got here. 12 oh, pretty good. Play on hands, 100 dust, fair enough. And in the pack, 10 golden legendaries. No, nope, probably not. Okay, not much, but um, yeah, good arena about good arena gone. Okay, so I've been Dark Skeleton. Thanks for watching this video. Hope that helped you guys out once again, and I will see you in my future Hearthstone content.